Woodwork Geek pack here again. This time a set of coasters, but not just any coasters. KSFX coasters with a St George's Cross to boot. I made these for some new colleagues I was training. And I have to say, I massively underestimated the amount of work. I thought a few little off-cuts, a uh, couple of weekends and all would be done. Um, little did I know it would be the best part of a month of weekends. Um, and a whole load of work I wasn't expecting. Um, started off getting all of the wood to the same dimension. So you can see here, this is all the same thickness. Um, and then I'm kind of sorting and ordering those thicknesses to create the first glue up for that chaos effect. Um, so after bandsawing them, they all go through the plane, of the, sorry, drum sander together to get them to a consistent uniform thickness. Um, I love this little drum sander. Um, I can't believe I waited so long to get it. The key for me when I make chaos boards or chaos coasters um, is that uniform thickness and, and really good glue surfaces. So each surface of that wood needs to be perfectly flat so that when you get glue on there, you get a total surface touching um, so that the glue can touch, um, bond both sides correctly. It takes a lot of time. It's not a quick or simple kind of process. Um, and for me, the drum sander is the best um, tool that I have for getting that flat finish so that when you glue them up, they, they do join and don't kind of break. You can see here, just cleaning up the drum on the sander um, just to make sure that it's all tip top. Um, I think in total, this is about a year's worth of kind of small off cuts. So you can see there, they're all about 15, 10, 15 mil um, thick. And there's a collection of different woods in there. So there's maple, a bit of ash, walnut, um, sapili, cherry, um, at the very least. And then the good old oak for the St. George's Cross, um, English oak, no doubt. Um, here you can see I just put the pencil on the top here and the purpose of the pencil is to make sure I know when the whole edge has been covered um, and that's generally for getting rid of snipe so when it goes through a planer the first few inches can get um, what's called snipe where you get a slight indentation on the first part of the wood um, and the pencil is a, a excellent tool for just making sure that you can see that the whole surface has been sanded. After all the um, pieces of wood are flattened, it's then on to glue up. So I use parallel clumps um, and I use a um, paint roller um, with glue on there just to make sure that I get a consistent film of glue across the whole surface area so that I know um, everything's going to bond correctly. Um, the parallel clamps are, are really good for making sure that you end up with a flat edge so you can see here I, I glue them up on my table saw because that's a cast solid surface that's dead flat um, so when I put the parallel clamps on it I know that, that each of those clamps has not got a twist or a buckle in it they're all parallel flat so when it's clamped together um, I know it's going correct and then I alternate the parallel clamps you can see there's some facing me and some facing away from me just to make sure that it doesn't introduce any curve um, to the boards. So I glue up a number of these um, kind of panels to, to size. Um, and you can see me just clearing off some glue there, just making sure that I'm getting properly flat kind of edges, just to make sure that there's no kind of deviations, because every deviation you have to sand out for the next stage. So the flatter you can get, these boards or planks, the, the less wastage you end up sanding away at the next stage. Um, and it's in essence, it's a repeat um, over and over again until you get the chaos effect that you're looking for. Sometimes you can do it three times, sometimes five times. It, it kind of all depends on the look 
that you're going for. And with the Chaos Coasters, I needed quite small pieces um, in effect because otherwise it's just going to be a kind of one piece of wood for the coaster. So everything was cut down into five to ten centimetre blocks by the end so that you, you kind of got that differentiation. Um, and it worked out well. I was, I was really pleased with how it came out in the end. Um, you can see he, me here just using some calls just to keep that kind of plank as flat as possible. Um, just to make sure I'm making the most use of the wood that I can. After 24 hours, I come back, take the um, glued up planks out of the clamps, and then they go through the drum sander again. You can just see me at the beginning there, just putting the pencil lines across it again, just so that I can see when everything's kind of flat and smooth, so that I've got a good clean edge for the next stage. Um, there's lots of repeats of this process over and over again, and the drum sander does get a thorough working out removing the glue that spreads out the joints and you can see another piece there with the glue kind of showing. The most irritating thing about these boards is the number of passes you have to do through the drum sander to get them flat and clean. Um, it's certainly not the most interesting board from a maker perspective. I much prefer um, the kind of effect you get from a basket weave so the amount of effort you put into the look that you get it's much less work but much more kind of um, pleasing but perhaps that's just me the geometry of a basket weave I find really pleasing whereas the chaos can be a bit random um, so not not necessarily as pleasing to my eye but they seem to be well received so they obviously um, Are worth making it's just the amount of man hours you put into them to get them to be flat is huge after everything's flat and squared and um, sanded I then come back to the bandsaw and I cut all of the pieces to an equal width um, and this is so that I can then start to make them into the squares the second glue up um, ready for making into the coasters. It takes quite a lot of um, preparation to get them through um, to the right thickness um, and you actually lose so much material um, because you're, you're constantly trimming, sanding, planing, gluing, trimming, sanding, planing, gluing. Um, there's a lot of um, wastage with these um, chaos coasters. Here I'm just trimming down some oak, getting ready for making the kind of St George's cross. Um, you see me there just showing how thin the piece of oak can be when you cut a veneer, kind of slice off it. Um, the bigger piece I had to plane first to get a good edge, um, so I just take it to the um, planer or jointer get a flat edge on the top and then I'll square up one side um, against the back fence so that I get a 90 degree corner and then that's what I'll then use um, on the uh, bandsaw to then thickness that piece of wood so that when the cross goes in the um, long and the thin piece of the cross are exactly the same. I do love my bandsaw, I'm so glad I saved up for a decent pencil. Um, here you can see back through the drum sander just to make sure that those kind of pieces are exactly the same so there'll be the cross in the middle um, pieces. Here you can see I just go through the squares again because whilst they were all glued up and they were kind of chaotic they weren't they weren't chaotic enough, the pieces just didn't didn't kind of work, so I re-glued everything into strips again um, so that I could get a more um, a random pattern 
from the wood. As with every cut, comes another bandsaw. Uh, with the bandsaw comes another sand to make sure you get good glue joints. Um, so back through the um, drum sander, to flatten all the edges off so that we're back to a perfect glue surface. And I glue the coasters up in segments. So I do a chaos block followed by an oak, which will become the first part of the St. George's Cross, followed by the chaos part. So two of those then get mated to the longer oak strip to then make the cross. Um, so you grew, glue one width, cut it in half, that gives you the two widths, and then put the big um, longitudinal piece of oak through the centre and glue it up side to side. Here comes the clamps again on the table saw, um, and this is to get the kind of first half glued up to all of the kind of random strips are going to laid out. The oats was in the middle. Lots and lots of glue. And then use the roller again so that I get a nice even film across the whole surface. Um, and then it's clamps time. You can see the, I think it was four slices before the oak and then the oak and then another four slices. Um, I find it's quite important to clamp close to the end because if you don't clamp close to the end they can splay and then you, you don't get a particularly good glue joint. Um, these came out fine. I was well happy with them. The, the finished results, all the glue lines were tight and, and no gaps um, just the way they should be. Another 24 hours passes and then I take all of the glue, um, all the clamps off the glued up um, piece and you can see there there's the kind of what starts off as one half of the um, coasters. So I take the bulk of the glue off with a plane, like hand plane, block plane and then through the drum sander again to get a good clean edge. I think after this I then chop this in half on the um, chop saw that then gives me the two halves to put the oak um, strip in the middle yeah you can see we're just cutting it in half there look um, and there's the strip so I then cut this strip down to the correct width so put that through the table so I think I might even put it through the um, bandsaw I think I might have done the bandsaw there was too much on the table saw See there, I ripped it on the bandsaw, and that there becomes the blank, and that blank is then, if you like, sliced from horizontally, uh, vertically, through its thickness, and then each slice is a, a coaster. Um, so one more glue up left. I'm just about to get onto that. Um, so just cleaning up the edge. Now I tend to make. Um, coaster blocks at least 60 centimeters so I can get a good um, volume of coasters out of a single blank and then I try and always make new patterns each time I try not to remake the same pattern coasters so I've done um, kind of lazy river um, coasters I've done basket weave coasters chaos coasters St George's coasters um, they go down well. They make nice little um, gifts for people um, and they're good for handing out for um, getting your name um, around. Here, see me just kind of taking out the glue from the edges just to straighten everything out. And I've got a feeling I'll put it through the thicknesser after this so that I know that I've got a square um, coaster and that's half the trick um, 
having the right tools to be able to do these things. It's taken me decades to collect the tools over time, saving up and buying one a year, one every six months. Um, but paying back now, I can pretty much make whatever I, I choose. The next project's going to be a side table, so oak and walnut side table, so look out for that in the coming months. Um, this is a handy little jig that I made for the chop saw for making sure that the coasters can be cut safely. Um, with any blank, you end up losing um, the last kind of five centimetres or so because it becomes too um, well, too dangerous for me to, to kind of cut through. Um, so what I was doing there is just getting the coaster so it's the right thickness. Once it's set up, you then just keep bringing the blank along, cutting another coaster, another coaster, another coaster. Um, a sharp blade is a must, um, and not trying to force the blade through the material too quickly and, and kind of um, splaying the blade off left or right. You just let the blade cut through the stock. And you can see here I'm just cutting coaster after coaster after coaster, popping them behind me and sticking them on the table. Uh, when you get to this stage, you know you're kind of nearly done. So... I find this very rewarding because kind of 10 minutes and you go from having kind of a block of wood that doesn't resemble kind of much to something that's quite clearly um, going to be a coaster or um, here you go. I'm just getting to that point where it's starting to get a little bit short now and I'm not liking to have my hands too close to it. So you can see I use a, another off cut block behind it just to, um, get a bit closer to it. So after everything's cut, it's on to sanding. Um, so a little jig again, just to hold the Rotex upside down. And then I sand all sides with, um, I think it was 80, 100, and then 120. So I don't show all of the sanding, because uh, it does take a little while. Um, in essence, start with a pile, um, sand them all the way through, then start again with the next grip over repeat 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 um, nothing too glamorous about sanding but a vital step often it's the sanding that actually differentiates between an okay project and a, an excellent project um, so don't skimp would be my kind of advice and get the best sander and the best paper that you can just to make it a little bit easier And here I'm just setting up for branding iron. Um, and I actually made a mistake on some of these coasters. So um, you can see me making a jig here just to hold it. So it's all nice and um, kind of in place. And I can repeat the, the kind of burn marks on them. But what I didn't do was sort all of the coasters into the same order. So some coasters have the logo on the back and some would be on the front because they don't match so um, if you stack them in grain orientation um, it doesn't match um, and that for me is a, a mistake I shouldn't I shouldn't have done that next time round I will stack the, the whole set of coasters so that it reforms the pattern and the blank pattern so that the um, logo mark is the same across every single coaster um, just so that they're uniform and are all okay you can see here I've kind of put that on and it was a little bit um, faint the first logo so I put the branding iron back on just to get it in in essence lots of repeating I think it was over 30 coasters in total from that batch um, so I'm just going through one by one sticking the logo on it we are really close to the end at this point um, one thing that I have learned is that when you use the branding iron the wood is really really hot so if you put another piece of wood where you have put the branding iron on it 
you'll get that etched onto the other piece of wood. So you can see here I space out each coaster so they're not put on top of each other so you don't get that kind of um, hot transfer from one piece of wood to another piece of wood. So post doing the branding iron, the only thing left is a quick um, rub of the logo with a bit of paper, which I'm not sure I recorded, um, and then it's on to um, oiling. So those of you who've watched my channel before know that I'm a massive fan of Osmo's Top Oil. Um, I'm not sponsored or I take any endorsements from them. Um, I buy everything out of my own money, um, but I just find their product is... Um, very very durable um, it just seems to go on very very easy um, and it doesn't take long to apply so for me it kind of kind of works with the way that I work um, I tend to put a generous amount on the coasters and then after everything is kind of done I'll then come back about 15 minutes later and just buff the bulk of the um, oil off Hopefully you enjoyed watching. If you did, click and subscribe. If there was something I did you didn't like, tell me. If there's something you want me to bake or show how it can be made, then let me know. Um, always like a little bit of feedback. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching this and I'll see you on the next video.